Welcome to this session on Windows Security for Developers. If you are tuning in, I expect you are also thinking about the ongoing challenge of safeguarding technology against an ever-evolving threat landscape. In today's world, where technology drives so much of our productivity, any device running software is a prime target for attackers. I am Catherine Holsworth, and my team and I are focused on making it easy for you as developers to take advantage of the layers of built-in Windows security so that you can build your apps and services secure by design and default. Security is a shared responsibility. It is just as important for our app developers as it is for our Windows developers to help protect identities, data, privacy, and to build reputable apps. In this session we've put together for Build 2024, I'm diving into 12 of the newest Windows security features for all developers, all designed to help fortify your apps and systems so our joint ecosystem stays protected and privacy aware. Thank you for joining me. Let's go. In 2015, when we introduced Windows Hello as a secure way to sign in without entering a password, our identity systems were detecting around 115 password attacks per second. Less than a decade later, that number has surged to more than 4,000 password attacks per second. So number one on my list is to go passwordless by using pass keys with Windows Hello. It's an easy way to help protect user identities. Pass keys work differently than passwords. Instead of a single vulnerable secret, pass keys use two unique keys known as a cryptographic key pair. One key is stored safely on Windows, guarded by Windows Hello, and the other key stays with the site that registered the pass key. Because this combination is unique, your pass key will only work on the website you created it, so you can't be tricked into signing into a malicious lookalike website. This is why pass keys are phishing resistant. For developers to enable pass keys, use Fido's industry standard web auth end protocol and remember check if Windows Hello is available on the user's device to protect your passkey locally on Windows. Windows also supports cross-device authentication, so websites and apps can authenticate users using a passkey stored on their mobile device. As part of your passkey flow, remind users to create a passkey in Windows Hello to make their user experience simpler. Windows continues to evolve to help developers protect credentials as attack techniques advance. So number two on my list is VBS key protection, a new feature using the virtualization extension capability of the CPU to create an isolated runtime outside the normal operating system and his negligible perf impact. When in use, VBS keys are isolated in a secure process, ensuring that key operations occur without exposing the private key material outside the space. At rest, private key material is encrypted by a TPM key, binding VBS keys to the device. This protection prevents dumping keys from process memory or exporting them in plain text, thwarting admin level attacks. To use VBS key protection, use the cryptographic next generation framework, and it's as simple as passing an additional flag to the encrypt API to indicate VBS should protect your key. Okay, third on my list is removing NT LAN Manager or NTLM. This has been a huge ask from our security community as it will strengthen user authentication. Kerberos has been the default authentication protocol for a long time, but there are still cases where Windows falls back to NTLM. The reliability and flexibility of Kerberos has been expanded to reduce NTLM dependencies. New capabilities have been added for initial and pass-through authentication using Kerberos, as well as a local key distribution center for Kerberos. These changes are exposed through the Negotiate protocol. This is where we need help from developers to make sure apps and services are ready for the ntlm world by checking you are not hard-coding NTLM and instead use Negotiate. Once you do this, Windows will use the most secure protocol available and your customers will be seamlessly more secure. 
Right, on to number four, personal data encryption or PDE. This enhances security by encrypting data and only decrypting it when the user unlocks their PC using Windows Hello for Business. PDE enables two levels of data protection. Level one, where the data remains encrypted until the PC is first unlocked. And level two, where files are encrypted whenever the PC is locked. PDE complements BitLocker's volume level protection and provides dual layer encryption for personal or app data when paired with BitLocker. Developers can leverage the PDE API to protect their app content enabling IT admins to manage protection using their mobile device management solution. Here's a quick PDE demo video for you. Personal Data Encryption, or PDE for short, is a new feature which provides Windows Hello-based data protection using powerful built-in encryption. In this demo, we want to quickly walk through the stages for an org to enlighten their app with PDE API. Pat is an application developer working for Contoso. Contoso has decided to enlighten their photo editor app with PDE API, enabling end users to protect content. An update is then pushed out to everyone using their photo editor. Dominique is the IT admin of First Up Consultants and their team is required to secure pictures taken during a client event. To enhance security, they enable PDE for all users at First Up Consultants and updated everyone to the latest Contoso photo editor, which is PDE enabled. Eli is the chief photo editor at First Up Consultants and is responsible for managing images taken during their events. Eli updated the Contoso photo editor app and noticed padlocks on images stored on Windows and was happy the customer content was protected. In this scenario, we've shown the usage, delivery, and customer impact when an app adopts PDE API. Next up, number five, BBS Enclaves, which we're excited to announce at Build 2024 and available for developers to try now. A VBS Enclave is a software-based trusted execution environment within the host application's address space, providing deep OS protection of sensitive workloads, such as decrypted data. When using a VBS Enclave, most of the app runs as usual, while the sensitive portion can securely execute within the Enclave. The Enclave is shielded not only from other system processes, but from the host application itself. VBS Enclave actually leverages the same underlying tech used to secure Microsoft's operating systems. You can now try VBS Enclave API and our security team are eagerly awaiting your feedback as you secure your sensitive workloads. Given the current threat landscape, there is a good chance your customers will want to attest device health before allowing an app to do its thing. With number six on my list, Developers can now remotely and securely verify or attest critical device health credentials and key materials within their apps. For example, an app can verify key storage properties to ensure they are protected before use. When developers integrate with the attestation service, they can give the app the control to verify device health and define customized actions for the app. All assessments rely on cryptographic evidence and developers have control over the attestation service policies. Today, the attestation service supports device health, TPM and VBS key storage providers and will soon support verifying Pluton and VBS enclaves. Here's a quick demo app using the attestation service to check device health. The PC on the left has been tampered with while the PC on the right is healthy. The app checks for security state via attestation and depending on the outcome, the app can block or go about doing its work. It's that easy. Right, let's move on to number seven, Zero Trust DNS. The team has been working hard to get a preview ready for you in time for build 2024. I'm so excited about that. Most network destinations are defined by long lived domain names instead of long lived IP addresses. However, enforcing domain name boundaries is challenging as it requires breaking encryption or intercepting plain text traffic. When enabled, Zero Trust DNS natively restricts Windows devices to approved network destinations by domain name. 
Outbound IPv4 and IPv6 traffic is blocked and won't reach the intended destination unless resolved by a trusted, protected DNS server or an exception is configured by the IT admin. While Zero Trust DNS is still in development, we recommend planning to configure your apps and services to use the system DNS resolver to avoid being blocked when Zero Trust DNS is enabled in high security environments. Your apps can be made Zero Trust DNS aware by replacing your custom DNS client with either the IP address retrieval API or the API for other DNS information. It's as easy as that. In the face of rising attacks focused on exploiting unknown or unpatched vulnerabilities, we strongly advocate for preventative and containment measures. Number eight on my list is Win32 App Isolation, a new Windows security feature that helps contain damage and safeguards user privacy choices if an app is compromised. Win32 App Isolation is the default isolation least privileged standard for Windows and establishes a security boundary with brokered resource access. This means users are asked for consent when an app tries to access undeclared resources like printer, registry and file access. We recommend all apps, especially the popular ones, be secure by default. By using Win32 app isolation capabilities, you are guided to develop your app with least privileged resource access, which is a crucial element of a layered security approach. Win32 app isolation is close to GA thanks to feedback from our developer community. You can onboard with seamless Visual Studio integration, so now is the time to start isolating your Win32 app. Here's a quick demo of how it works. On the left, I show an app without isolation, and it is seamlessly compromising user data. Whereas on the right, the same app with Win32 app isolation prevents the damage. Win32 app isolation will guide you to create your app's least privilege, which will set your app up nicely for when we make admin users on Windows more secure, which is ninth on my list. By default, most people run with full admin access. This means that apps and services can also access the kernel and other critical services, which has risks of phishing, attacks, or just accidental clicks, which can lead to data loss, secret stolen, or even your machine flattened. With their new admin security feature, we are building profile separated admin and user tokens to provide users great protection by default. Yet Windows will remain flexible for people to self-elevate to admin if they want and when they want. As always, we welcome insider program feedback. Here's a quick demo showing the simplicity of Hello Elevation with the profile separated admin and user tokens. Naomi is traveling to Europe to attend a fashion show. After reaching Europe, she tries to change her time settings when Windows Security intercepts it and prompts her to authorize the change. Naomi pauses and looks at the information displayed on the dialog. She is happy to see that the request is coming from Windows Settings app and is happy to allow the change after, authenticating with her Hello credentials. With AdminList, Naomi was able to change her Windows settings securely and continues with her daily function. Now, our team is deeply committed to privacy as well as security. We've heard your feedback that people want more control over which apps can use the camera, the microphone, and location. So 10th on my list are the platform changes being introduced to give users the ability to individually control all Win32 app access to these sensitive resources. Our goal is to ensure apps function seamlessly when our granular privacy controls light up. We'd love developers to start app compatibility testing and share feedback as we roll it out to the insiders. As number 11, I'm adding the recommendation to use MSIX packaging for your app. It gives your app seamless installation, update and uninstallation experiences. It guides building secure least privileged apps that we've just talked about and helps you declare use of sensitive capabilities, giving users visibility and control over the sensitive resources. And 12th on my list, we recommend signing your app. Signing signals to Windows, as well as threat detection systems, that the app is trusted with a good reputation so it's not blocked by mistake. 
The team has been working hard to make signing easier and have announced in Time for Build 2024 our new Trusted Signing. Trusted Signing is a complete solution from Microsoft to make app signing simple and effective for all developers. It simplifies the signing process by managing all aspects of the certificate lifecycle, including the issuance from a trusted Microsoft CA. Trusted Signing also seamlessly integrates with popular developer tooling like Azure DevOps and GitHub, streamlining the process and reducing time. We'd love you to give it a go. Now your apps have the layers of security and are packaged and signed, it's showtime. This is where our new Smart App Control comes in. Smart App Control shifts the app security model to allow installation and use of signed or reputable apps only, shielding people from emerging threats by blocking unknown apps and malware. The best way to ensure seamless compatibility with Smart App Control is to sign your app, including all binaries, temp installer files, scripts, and also the uninstallers. If you're not already signing your app or are looking to improve the process, trusted signing is an easy way to get started. And there you have it, my build 2024 top 12 list of Windows security features for developers, all designed to empower you to create apps and services which are secure by design and by default with a stellar reputation for your customers to love. Our Windows security team is focused on empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. We look forward to your feedback as Windows security continues to evolve. There's tons of documentation to help you out as well. To find out more, check out the link below. Thanks for tuning in.